Everybody, hey, it's Ted Bogert with The Ted Show. Um, I'm excited. We are doing our series, American Stories, with the one and only co-host, the amazing attorney, immigration guy, Sal Picataggio. Hello up? there, Ted. Good to Picataggio. see you. Picataggio. Picataggio. Oh, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> now I got it. Now I got it. I'm learning, right? I should know this. I'm Italian. Uh, and today <laughs> we have uh, two guests. They're friends of the show. They're great friends of mine. Uh, Ana Gazzara and Hafid Bujidi, both on the show. What's up, guys? How are you? Hi. I like your Welcome. jacket, Hafid. It looks good. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, uh, let me see what's, uh, where that come from. Oh, it's Tommy. Yeah, of course it is. <laughs> um, but we, uh, you know, you guys, we haven't told your origin story as far as immigration goes, and that's what this show is about. Plus, we want to talk about all of the efforts that you are doing to go global, global virtual. Uh, you guys are really going out there and really making a splash. It's all over social media. I can't wait to talk about it, but I'm going to let you introduce yourselves. We'll start with Sal and he'll take over. Hey, everybody. Thank you again, Ted, for having me back. I, I'm always happily surprised. Uh, so <laughs> welcome back to American <laughs> Stories. Thanks for being an honor for coming back. Uh, I am Sal Ficataggio, immigration attorney with Colombo and Heard in Orlando, Florida. Recently as today, apparently named the number one immigration law firm in Orlando by the Orlando Business Ooh. Journal. Hey! Well, congratulations. <laughs> That's big. Congrats. We found that out uh, right before lunchtime, and so I'm going to tell everybody. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so uh, welcome back. Uh, Columbo & Heard is a, uh, is a full-service immigration law firm handling everything from family-based to business-based to the not so nice stuff with removal and deportation uh, all the way through from visitors all the way to citizenship and everything in between uh, helping people a lot of times in the real estate industry at least on my end uh, helping their foreign clients or often even especially in orlando themselves uh navigate immigration into the united states but we're super happy to have hafid and anna here who early on in the lockdown safer at home quarantine whatever we feel like calling it now started global virtual on facebook which has blossomed into a massive facebook group that weekly is hosting incredible speakers talking about different issues facing the global real estate industry uh so i'm super happy to have you all here to talk about it so please if you don't know, introduce yourselves and 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 how you got into all of this and how immigration matters to you yeah, start Actually, with you anna no, we go, we first, go with Anna first. first. Yes. yes. First. Okay. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you so much, Ted, and you, Saul, for uh, having us here today. It's always a pleasure to be with you guys and uh, share time, share experience, and uh, talk a little bit about like me or about the global virtual or about both. Yes. Let's start with you. Let's talk about <laughs> your a little of your origin and then about immigration, because that's the, that's what we're doing. We're trying to uh, put a face with uh, everything that's going on in our world as far as immigration is concerned, and you two definitely meet that. Super, <laughs> super. As you all can kind of figure it out, I'm an original from USA by my accent, <laughs> strongly. I'm original from Brazil. I am born in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, and I come into USA. I was between 20 and 21 years old. Uh, don't ask me my age now. That's enough. I'm going to take five years, five years ago. So five, it was so just five years, a ago. years ago. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I can tell you guys that I have way over 10 years living in USA. Just sure. let's keep it this way and no more <laughs> like details on that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yes, when I come into USA, I come in with the uh, desire of learn more, uh, learn English, because like even though that you go into schools in Brazil, it's it's not the same thing. And I will assume that would be like anywhere in the world that we try to learn a different language. It's nothing better than when you have the one-on-one uh, -on -one contact with the language. Uh, I came here with a bag full of dreams. <laughs> like uh, most of the immigrants has it. And uh, of course, we're going through different phases in our life and especially uh, uh, through the immigration process. It's, it's a long way. And especially if you don't have like the right advisor near you, like a uh, counseling, a uh, lawyer, that's gonna help you in your way. Uh, it's make way even harder of <laughs> to, to get what you want it to be, you know, but uh, that was uh, the, 
best decision I ever made in my life. I had no idea that I would stay here forever. I uh, at, at the beginning it was just like I'm gonna go spend some time in Brazil. I was uh, in USA. I was going through some uh, moments in my life in Brazil, and I just wanted to run away from everything and uh, and take a time for myself, learn more about uh, the language, and learn more about the culture process. And I came here. And uh, after I go back home for the first time, I have that feeling that back home was not more home anymore, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, uh, and um, maybe some of the people that are listening to us today, they have the same feeling, you know, like you, you, you get to that moment, okay, home is not home anymore. And now what am I going to do? Right. So um, I choose my path to, 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 create a new life in, in, in USA, uh, which was not easy. You know, uh, every day is a new battle. Uh, and once and again, I will enforce it's, it's good to have the right people near you. So those people can interact to you and your way where you want it to be. And today uh, I am a real estate agent. I am uh, specialized in the international market. And uh, I love what I do. Uh, I do, I love, what I do, I love with the who I do, and uh, for who I do. <laughs> it, <laughs> it is. That's how you know you've mastered the English language because that is not, that was that real good. Simple thing to say. <laughs> no, not at all. I have the language like that. I have to think a little bit before I say that, right? Because I have to to get that right, you know. And um, that was very well put. And doing this uh, time where. Most of the people get locked out home. Uh, I, I, I love to connect with the people. You know, I think that big part of our business is connecting with the people. A lot of people might think in a different way, but if you are not connecting every day with the different people, you're going to be stuck in the same thing. You're not going to grow your business. And it's not just connecting with the buyers and, and sellers and consumers, but connect with other professionals too, because the industry, the professional that you work is like someday you might be like sending an offer or receiving an offer. And it makes so much easy when you have the face, put it the face and the name that you see coming through, 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 through the offer that you're working with it. So I take it very serious, like when uh, network coming to the professional and all the, the industry, not just like another agent, but another uh, uh, a lender or title company, uh, anybody that involved in your industry, if you know them well, it's make your job way much easy because you can call somebody oh, and yeah. ask questions when you have those questions. And coming to this virtual world where we have it to stay home, I was like, like now, like, what are we gonna do? And uh, I call Hafid one day and I say, hey, regardless associations, because we are all part of our groups, right? And a different association say, we have uh, so many people that we have a uh, met doing those years in our industry and uh, with all the travels, because we do travel a lot. I mean, like, mm -hmm. I mean, like, I'm a travel sick right now. Like I look at my luggage, <laughs> they look at me and they are kind of like, what's happening to you? And I mean, the same way, like what happened to me, you know, all the travels get canceled. This year we had a, like so much uh, that was planning to, you know, so many trips, like uh, a, a lot of our international partner was waiting for us and the others had just this word like travel collapsing, nobody travel like because of that virus. And, um, and did I- Did you have trouble, Anna, did you have trouble? And then I'll, I'll get to you, Hafid, sorry. I'm, I'm, I wanted to hear where she, where she was going because I love it. I think um, I'd love to hear if you had trouble working with your international clients uh, because of the shutdown. Did it? Did you have to? I, I'm guessing that going global or global virtual was kind of the result of you trying to figure out how to best keep in touch with them. Yes, and that's exactly how how we start. I call Hafid and I say, Hafid, we gotta create something that we can get the agents together. You know, we don't gonna be able to travel much as we would this year. And how are we gonna do to keep the business going? And, and Hafid uh, said, I have no idea, Anna, but I'm glad you have a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> but wait, much. before you get before you get to the before you get to talking about it. I want Hafid to tell his story and then you guys come together and, and talk okay. about what you have when created. When your powers combine. Yes, all right, Hafid. 
Cool. You're up, my friend. <laughs> Thanks, Anna Gazara. Hey, so uh, my name is Hafid Bujiri. I uh, traveled to the state in 2003. I was 24. Uh, that was uh, 17 years ago. Um, I came and I work, uh, was working for Disney. I did everything at Disney. I was, uh, I bust tables, I served, I bartended, and even played music uh, uh, at the show. I was a drummer. Uh, the belly dance to the show inside. Yes, Sal, you didn't know I that. Didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't uh, know that. I didn't know that. Yeah, it was it was fun. It was fun. It was something uh, very exciting to do, especially at Disney. Uh, I was a performer uh, back in Morocco, but uh, uh, when I came here, it took me a couple of years to to join the Disney force, uh, playing drums for them. After that, um, uh, uh, two thousand. I don't remember exactly two thousand eight. Uh, while buying my first home, uh, I kind of the idea came to me. It's like, hey, uh, this is a business that probably will suit you better. The reason why I, I was born and raised uh, 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 as a as a builder. My dad was building homes, and I was working for him since I was I don't even remember going playing <laughs> in the sand from playing in the sand. Then we start having tasks and doing stuff, and and and, and suddenly I'm on the schedule and I have to show up. I leave in a certain times. So that's when I was hooked up. So, uh, at the course of buying my first home, as I said, uh, uh, the idea kind of kind of grow my mind, and and I thought that was that's it. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna do it. So the first time I got my license was 2010, and back then, if you guys remember, was everybody was leaving the business. So everybody was like, "Well, this is not the right time. This is no, you can't do that." You got like, you know what? This isn't made. There is no going back. So since then, I've been doing real estate since then until now. Very blessed, very happy. Um, one of the biggest things that real estate gave me is those beautiful connections. I get to know Ted, I get to know Sal, I get to know Anna Gazara, and many, 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 many beautiful souls that I was connected with. Um, when it comes to global virtual, yes, the idea was Anna. She called me, and uh, I, I could not say no uh, because if you know Anna, you can't say <laughs> nobody no. says no to Anna. No, uh, so uh, <laughs> we thought about it. We, uh, the, but the good thing about the global virtual when we started on the Facebook group, we were actually starting the work. It was not uh, to make money. It was to connect with people to uplift people, to help people mentally. And that was that was the idea. There was nothing else. So to the point, uh, we start bringing um, uh, speakers. And then we decided, well, it's not that much fun. People still, how about we do uh, a happy hour? And our happy hour was a super success. We had performers. Actually, the first performer, I think, was uh, in UK that performed live for us. We have uh, people performing uh, locally. We have people performing from Belize, uh, literally. And we have people- So you brought yeah. everyone together. Was it like on a Zoom? I All can't remember. Over. Yes, it was Zoom. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. How did you How did you coordinate that? And then what was some of the responses you got? I would imagine people are, were looking at the time, especially people are looking for the connection because we're sort of going a little bit back out now, but now that the restaurants and bars are starting to close again, uh, we're kind of t coming back inside. Well, so what what kind of things did you, did you uh, get? What kind of responses did you get from people as you were planning this and implementing it? It was, we, Anna and I, we got tons of calls. You can imagine people cheering for us, like, this is good, this is awesome. Ted, remember, we have people from Florida, we have people from New York, from uh, China, we uh, uh from all over europe we have people from all over the place with tons of ethnicity like one time we had a meeting or a happy hour and we seen how many languages we have i don't remember it was over 10 languages with 10 different wow. languages in one zoom meeting it was beautiful it was uh, uh, awesome you know go ahead Anna. you know what you wanted to talk right yeah <laughs> <laughs> had to add it. yeah you know I love you. you got it. You got that right. <laughs> the beauty of this is because during the years, the way in the way how I see it is we have all this connection, right? And we are so used to get together in France, get together in Dubai, get together in Belgium, and, and London, and Canada. Uh, 
and you expect to see that person and uh, sometimes you don't even communicate much as we start to communicate when the 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 virus starts attacking the world uh we want to keep our customers informed we want to keep our realtor friends informed so we start daily in the daily basis connecting with the people in france hey how things are going there how the market is going there are you guys able to open uh we call the people in spain the same thing belgium dubai so we actually connect more with the people with the contacts that we had before we connected way more with them doing this COVID than uh, while like compared to what we used to do before, get us way more closer uh, uh, to 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 the people that we we know and uh, and this is a uh, one of the devices and that's one of the things that we as a global virtual we want to bring forth. You know, don't look everything as a bad thing. You know, sometimes we need that break. The earth need that break. You know, like ev like everything around us, you know, but that doesn't mean that you have it to stop. Use the time to connect it. You know, it's amazing how the association NAR has been able to put together classes that was free. You get yeah. certificated and uh, you get, you know, like get your profession to the next level. It's a time for yourself. Sometimes we are in an everyday, you know, like running to 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 make the money. Uh, and and to pay the bills and we forget about recycling ourselves to 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 learn more uh and and understand that what's making you different than any other person you know you can have like men of real estate agents but what's going to make you special is your knowledge what you know about the, the topic right. Are you understand what you are doing can you do more you know with the with with, with the, all the technology uh what we doing now it's nothing different than we was doing before. People that are doing the, the, the international market, they was in the Zoom meetings before. Of course, it is a different scale right now because we are like in 10 Zoom meetings. Like, <laughs> yeah, it, How many it, it, are we doing? Many, but, many. Uh, I feel, I feel yeah. like people got used to it though. So I would imagine they'd be more amenable, more acceptable to it, which allows for that closeness because I fought it. I didn't want anything to do with Zoom meetings because I thought, well, how am I going to hug somebody or smile at somebody or be and it just you learn you you learn how to communicate via this um as close as you can to being next to or in the same room as someone i want to i don't know if sal's got a question but I, uh, i'll let him sure. go first and i've got a question yeah uh i do want to know that's the idea of global virtual which i was so happy when it popped up originally back in like march it was a right I mean, right at the beginning you guys jumped on it real fast so how are you seeing the changes with the foreign buyers, the ones looking to come over to either relocate or to invest. Now that we're 300 year, three months into this, how are we seeing the changes? What are, what are you seeing? What are, what are the global virtual members seeing in terms of changes to the international clients and, and their potential moves over here to the U S do you want to go ahead? Or do you want me to ask Hafid? Sure. I'll, I'll, I'll jump in. I'll put something in and you can uh, finish it up. Okay. You can brush it later on. So, yeah. uh, so definitely, definitely, uh, a bit a global business has uh, changed. It, 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 it did affect dramatically. And numbers are down. If you see April and March numbers are, are definitely down. Um, the, the one of the keys, one of the smartest uh, 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 people in the industry. Can, uh, when, when we talk to them, they kind of give us some, some hints in there of what they're doing. They, they shift 100%. I'll, I'll give you an example of the Grove. The Grove were able to close deals 100% virtually. They, uh, they did not have uh, the buyer come all the way to uh, to Florida from, from a different state to buy or to sign. or No, they, they find a state that uh, a notary in a different state that allow electronic signature and they start closing deals from that from there since that we had that meeting with the grove and we had a virtual meeting and we have a lot of people since then the idea just popped in and people start realizing it's like oh we can do that <laughs> so uh, that's one of the things um the the local market has a little bit shift as well we lost a lot of deals because of unemployment we cannot do verification of income but we had a lot of people from the north that kind of uh, balanced it a little bit. Uh, New Yorkers, man, 
Uh, I love the New Yorkers. They came in, they, 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 they moved into Florida. It's like, okay, we're good. So that's why, personally, uh, I think the whole, the the only the bad thing that I've seen or the worst thing I've seen had happened to a uh, commercial real estate. The 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 impact in the commercial real estate was twenty percent lower than when we had in two thousand ten and eleven. Imagine at that time it was bad for everyone. At this time is worse for commercial at twenty percent lower than 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 before. Uh, hoping for recovery. I don't know, Anna, if you want to add something to it, or should I just keep talking? <laughs> I can add a little bit more uh, regarding to the international buyers. Uh, the the more difficult that we see right now, we were overcoming the closing, the virtual closing. We was capable to overcome that right on the beginning when this started and the title company and the banks were saying, oh, we cannot close because supposedly the virtual closing is just for people who are American city or uh, residents. So we were capable to overcome that with the translator of the paperwork and, and, and uh, help those uh, international buyers on. Uh, there is a bunch of international buyers right now that they, they are wait for the right opportunity because you got to understand once we work with the international market and that's the build of it, you know, like it's very important for you to understand what's going on, not just in the local market, but really the global market because right. sometimes there are people, they are just wait for the right moment. They are not looking for a location. They are looking for the numbers. It's all about the ROI and the end, you know, the return of the investment. And sometimes it's not about investing in Orlando. It's not about investing in London or Dubai. They wait for how much I'm going to gain with that. And mm -hmm. unfortunately, you know, sometimes go bad. That doesn't mean that uh, uh, when the market go low or we have a situation like that, that does necessarily means that it's going bad. It's bad for some people, but it's good opportunity for others. And uh, that's important to keep the eyes on that where it's a good moment to invest. Should I invest in these or like, for instance, it might be the commercial uh, being affected. It might be bad for people who are in the commercial right now. However, that's a lot of people that has a great ideas uh, that they can see good opportunities coming and then in commercial markets like pretty soon, you know, because some of the business that be uh, that will be going out of business will create opportunity for new business to come and take place on that. Um, another thing that we can see regarding to the international market too is the fact that uh, people who wanted to buy to spend more time, they are a little concerned with the, no, the, the, the travel restrictions, right? Right now, uh, Brazilian people cannot come into the USA. So Brazilian uh, uh, customers who are buying, they are more concerned because, okay, if I buy a house, but it can, I cannot even be able to use the house. So uh, those are the concerns that I see right now with the with, with with the customers from brazil from uk from other countries they are little concerned with uh, when i'm going to be able to get into usa again and uh, uh for the best part is like here we have a uh, um uh, attorney who are specialized in immigration we can drop i know i want to ask him the same question when <laughs> when can people get back in Seth? so <laughs> Had a little bit of a change this week. Yes, we did. Let's uh, talk about that. Immigration executive order number two. The first one was back in April, where it primarily focused on immigrant visas, green cards, and only those of those uh, folks who were going through the U.S. consulate or embassy outside of the United States getting those green cards. So if they were here, they were fine. Uh, and fortunately, even with this one, if they're here, they're fine. Uh, someone who's here, maybe as a student. Maybe uh, they're finishing up school virtually. Uh, maybe they were here as a visitor. Maybe they were already in some type of status and now they wanna go through green card. Uh, that's still okay. The restrictions are getting tighter and tighter on people who are outside of the United States and are trying to get new visas to come in. So this one now lasts all the way till the end of 2020. This is now a full end of year situation. And these uh, the restrictions on the green cards are the same uh, with some exceptions. So people making big investments, the EB-5 investors, they can still get green cards through the consulates. Uh, medical professionals coming to treat the virus, they can still get theirs and uh, spouses of US citizens. Uh, but now beyond green cards, H-1B specialty occupation, uh, 
Disney, very big or had been very big into H-1B employment. A lot of big tech companies are big into H-1B. Uh, up by, uh, over here in Lake Mary, uh, we have Verizon and Deloitte and a lot of companies up here who hire tons of foreign workers under the H-1B program. And if they weren't here already changing from a visitor or a student to H-1B, they're not getting a visa. They're not getting a visa at the consulate, even when consulates reopen because the consulates aren't even open right now. But they wouldn't be able to get one through the end of the year. Uh, one of the visa categories I work with a lot, L1s, uh, Anna, you were mentioning about commercial and Hafid, you mentioned about commercial. That's something where immigration and commercial real estate usually comes together because an L1 is for a foreign business opening up shop in the United States and sending over an executive or manager. At least that's the method I work with mostly. Sometimes it's massive companies, you know, Coca-Cola Brazil might be sending an executive to Coca-Cola US, but we're now talking about multinational companies who, if they want to set up an office in the US, they can't send over the executive or manager who's supposed to run it. Uh, the J-1 visa, your, um, your, your, uh, the J-1 for the exchange visitors, a lot of, uh, there's medical students on that, a lot of exchange uh, education, uh, all pairs. There's a lot of different challenges now. They are not going to be able to get visas either. Uh, again, if you're still a U.S. citizen, you're married, a foreign person, that's great. If you're still a U.S. citizen yourself, you can still come back in the United <laughs> States. Um, if you're working in some area that is going to protect our food supply, Apparently that's an exemption, which is cool, other than the medical ones. Uh, I have a list here, I'm, I'm reading off my list. <laughs> awesome. uh, and then other, some other like national interest, uh, students are still able to do their uh, optional practical training, their OPT, they're still able to do that. Uh, but it's getting tighter and tighter. And it's something we all need to be thinking about when we're talking with our foreign clients on, well, where are they? What are their plans? Is it just, are we looking for properties for investment or are we looking to relocate ourselves and our families? how are you going to get in i mean if they're just planning on coming in as a visitor every once in a while and then later they change their mind that could be okay but if the plan is i'm going to apply for something at the consulate uh while i'm still abroad well th that list of what you can do is now getting smaller and smaller and smaller with each new executive order it's interesting i mean i, um, I feel like they're the planning part especially on all of from all of us and what we do is that we're going to have to help them along a lot more. There's there's going to be so much more details that we have to get involved with and we have to ask the hard questions up front uh, so we're not wasting everybody's time, especially yeah. if they're fall into one of those categories, Sal. Um, all right. So I know it goes by fast, but um, I have to ask, I always ask you guys, uh, tell us what you did and Sal's already answered, but Anna and Hafid, what did you do during COVID to stay positive, to stay um, your smiley, awesome, upbeat selves? A couple things. Um, we did happy hour. <laughs> Cheers, <laughs> my friend. Now you're speaking my language. <laughs> we all drink. Yeah. Oh, so, um, just water. Happy. So we all had to go don't yeah. forget to tell that I call you every day to make sure that you are in a good mood. Come on, <laughs> make sure that you are very positive. And that's what this global virtual group is really doing. Cause it's, it, yes, there's the happy hours, there's all these events and the Zoom, which are great to see everybody, but just the kind of the day to day being able to chat with each other uh, yeah. in this group. I, we it, made, it helped a lot. We the made, connections, right? You yes, feel we connected. made great connection. It's not just a business connection. We meet friends all over the place. And that's yeah. that. That's what's cheering me. It's 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 awesome. Not just to worry about the business side of it. It's good. That's what we're here for. We're here for the business. But it, it it's ultimately for the relationship, for the friendship that we built within those uh, uh, this time. One thing, uh, Ted, uh, just to uh, put back on what you said earlier, how we balancing now that people are going out. So we used to have Monday and Tuesday uh, classes and Wednesday happy hour. So once things start opening, we kind of uh, uh, list back a little bit, especially on the classes, because then because when we started, there was not much Zoom classes. But right. after that, it was Zooms everywhere. So we decided to do just one Zoom a week, uh, one class and one uh, happy hour. Then. We've seen that everything start opening again and again. So we did the happy hour every other Wednesday. And now we just get to the decision. We did not announce it yet. Boss, can I now, can I say it? Oh, we got an exclusive. Oh, oh an exclusive. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, You've uh, heard it here first. Yeah. 
So we, uh, instead of having uh, uh, every uh, class every week, we decided to do a happy hour every other week and a class every other week. Uh, just uh, for all of us to have a break and to catch up with other things in life. And just uh, to add a little bit more, like he graduated, since this group was made in, especially for that, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm very motivated person that every day, like yeah, I wake up, I take almost an hour for my meditation things. And I wanted to, to make sure that I mean, my day it's clear, you know, and everything gets positive. I like the people around me be positive too. And I know it's hard sometimes when you see so many, like the media is all talking about bad things and the virtual, the global virtual, it's supposed to be positive. Every bad thing that they post out there, we try to bring a solution and a share with the group, right? And uh, when we, uh, when we, started to uh instead of two meetings per week we start to do like one that was because we wanted the team like mix it with the other groups too because there was so many other groups that was created and that we are very happy with that that was for them to also see the opportunity that the other groups was offering go connect with other people this group you already connect now like expand your connection go connect with the other groups because that's gonna make you like you know get to know other people and now with that every other week it's just because the things start to uh, uh, open and we want to make sure that uh, they don't just get there. So use it to stay home and go connect with other people, not uh, uh, put your life in risk. But if it's something that you can go and, you know, like connect with other people, little by little, go back to your closer to normal life, you know, take the CDC precautions, mm -hmm. just do it, you know, because it's all from inside to out. You have to be good, feel good. So the other people around you, they will be the same. Like it's your energy. Great. All right. Sal, Anna, Hafid, thank you so much. That was awesome. Just tell them really quick where they can reach out to Global Virtual. Where do they find you? We are on Facebook group. It's called uh, Global Virtual. Uh, they can reach out uh, directly to Anna or to myself via text, via email, via uh, whatever it's best. I'm going to see if I can put my number in here as well. They can reach out to Saul too. That's right. Yeah, I'll come out. And group. I can put you in touch with them, obviously. So if you want to reach out to me. <laughs> yeah. There, there it is. is. 407 <laughs> nice. And Ted, all just right. one more thing. Thank you yeah. so much for all you do. Like, because before we start and before all these virtual things, you was virtual connecting people for a long time. And we appreciate you, your work. You know, like some people might think that you don't even work because they think that this is your work, right? Ted, <laughs> <laughs> as I told him at first, he's an inspiration to uh, not just me, to a lot of people. Yes, you are. And then just continue to be how you are. You know, you inspire a lot of people, people in the industry, they love you. And it's good to let people know that you work in a tire company, right? Oh, I love it. Yes, yeah, totally. the title, whole that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> you guys got to make an old man cry this afternoon. Thank you. Well, that is very you. Uh, uh, hopefully we can get something uh, in the ground very soon so we can get together and um, me and Anna, we get together uh, literally on a weekly basis now or every other week. She comes to my house, hang out with my wife and kids. I'll go to her house and hang out with the husband and the kids. And and uh, we do things. So hopefully we can uh, see you guys and sell. I love that. Very, very soon. Just make sure to tell you know that how much uh, uh, you were respected and loved by us, at least. I love one, you guys. Thank you one very much. Thing, one thing that I, 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 I'm sorry, one more, last one, last one. We never had you in, in, in our global virtual, which is very sad because you're always busy. Yeah. So I think I'm going to reach out to you for probably not this Monday, the Monday after. Yeah, Fantastic. Keep the crossover going. There you go. Let's do it. Yes. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. I love you guys. Thank you so much. That was awesome. Hafid, Anna, Sal, thank you guys. Have a great afternoon. We'll see you soon. Thanks. Thanks, everyone, in the chat. Good to see you all in there. Thank you. Bye. Bye.